Hello and welcome. On this appropriately named video, I am exploring two of the lowest points of physics, pressure and temperature. Now, why go low when you can't go high? Well, going high is only limited by the methods and the amount of energy available. There is no theoretical high limit for temperature. I did reach several million degrees on the fusion reactor video, link in the description. And pressure will ultimately result in the creation of a black hole. And this is not to say that I or anybody could ever achieve that. So trying to reach the lowest point is more of a technical and engineering challenge for me and uh, also safer. There is also a certain appeal and excitement recreating conditions in outer space. So pressure is defined as the number of molecule hitting one side of a container versus the number of molecule hitting the other side of the container, in our case, the atmosphere. And the atmosphere exert a force measured in Newton per square meters. And this force is colossal, about 10 tons per square meters. I measure pressure in torr, which is equivalent to millimeters of mercury. The atmospheric pressure hovers around 760 torr and can sometimes drop or rise depending on conditions and altitude. Hurricane creates slight depressions and the lowest recorded vacuum was established in 2005 by Hurricane Wilma at 661 torr, which is roughly about the same vacuum your home personal vacuum cleaner can provide. The same pressure can be experienced at 11,000 feet. Airplanes at 30,000 feet fly in thinner air at 260 torr. In a previous video, I sent a high altitude balloon to about 100,000 feet, where the pressure is around 10 torr. Link in the description. So far, we've looked at pretty rough depression, and a mechanical pump such as this one can easily drop the pressure down to zero. But don't let that number fool you. This is nowhere near perfect vacuum. In fact, a rough approximation of the gas law gives us a number of molecules of nitrogen and oxygen at atmospheric pressure of about 3 times 10 to the power of 19 molecules per cubic centimeters, which look like this. One cubic centimeter. And a freedom of motion called the mean free path as short as 70 nanometers, which is about the size of a small virus or about the wavelength of high ultraviolet light. When dropping the pressure to this mechanical pump level, we can experience a vacuum equivalent to that of an altitude of 300,000 feet, which is about 10 to the power of 16 molecules per cubic centimeters, and a mean free path in hundreds of micron. So this gauge is just not sensitive enough to measure fractions of torr, and below this pressure, air does not behave like a fluid anymore, and a different method is needed to measure the vacuum. This is a Pirani gauge and it measures pressure from atmosphere down to this region when the air is not a fluid. And it also bridges the gap from the previous gauge to the next set. This is a cold cathode gauge that generates electron from a cathode in a magnetic field, and the amount of current collected by the anode is directly proportional to the pressure in the chamber. The hot cathode gauge works much the same way, except the electrons are generated by a hot filament. Both of these gauges can measure pressure in the ultra-high region, or below 10 to the power of minus 10 torr, where the molecular density is 1 to 10 billion per cubic centimeters, and a mean free pass in excess of 1 to 10,000 kilometers. So obviously each molecule will hit the side of the chamber many times before encountering another molecule. And here's the problem. Gases like air have a tendency to stick to the surface of everything exposed to it and release again at the most inconvenient time. So a preparation is needed to achieve the lowest vacuum possible. To remove possible oil and grease from manufacturing, I clean all the exposed parts with acetone. Then I bake them at 400 degrees for several hours to get rid of any water and organics contaminant. After cooling, I reassemble the rig and start to pump down. My roughing pump is this two-stage Alcatel. I am very satisfied with this model that has been reliable and performed very well without any issues for many years. The high vacuum is achieved with this turbo molecular pump, model 5081, also from Alcatel. This one had some issues and I had to salvage parts from other pumps to get this one to perform again. Anyway, after a while the pressure settles around 10 to the minus 6 store, and to remove as many of those pesky molecules stuck on the walls I was talking about earlier, I wrapped the chamber with this heating ribbon, which was a gift from my friend over at Adam Barassa on YouTube. Now this heating should dislodge as many molecules as possible from the inner walls. 
After several hours of heating and pumping, I let the chamber cool off to room temperature and started cooling it again. I used Freon on this first run. This process is sometimes called degassing. I reached an ultra high vacuum at about 10 to the minus 8 torr. About 10 billions of molecules per cubic centimeters still remain in the chamber, and the mean free path is about 1 km or 0.6 miles. The same pressure exists about 400 miles above the Earth, about the orbiting altitude of the space telescope Hubble. I mentioned Freon to cool the walls of the chamber, and obviously a more powerful cooling should get me to a lower pressure. If you remember my previous video on liquid nitrogen at home, I use a Stirling cooler, and it turns out this device fits exactly the KF40 vacuum fitting. After several cycles of baking and degassing with the Stirling cooler in place, and with great care, I finally reached the upper 10 to the minus 9 torr, which is the pressure when the desorption and diffusion starts to compete in particle accelerator, which by the way, is only about 10 times higher than what would be required to start the LHC. Also, most satellites evolve in this pressure range where the mean free path of air molecule is about 10 kilometers and the molecular density is only about 100 million molecules per cubic centimeters. To give you an idea of what these numbers mean, imagine blowing air molecules to the size of a grain of sand just barely visible. At this scale, my chamber would be the size of a city block and the mean free path would extend all the way to the moon's orbit. So any air molecule remaining in this volume will hit the walls of the chamber thousands of times before even passing another molecule. I think I've reached the uh, limit of this device ability and I uh, wanted to use a more aggressive cooling. So I built a jacket to introduce liquid nitrogen to cool my uh, vacuum chamber more efficiently without introducing harmful vibration that could damage my turbo pump. Any scientific experiment could and should be subject to scrutiny and before I share some of my results here, let me just point out these facts. I use two different vacuum gauge that operate on two different principles and obtain similar values. Now, of course, hey, I'm not a certified authority on anything, and this is just a YouTube channel without any supervision or quality control. For one, I have no reason to lie as my channel is not popular enough for any monetary compensation. Two, I do this for fun as previously stated, and three, everything I do in this channel is somewhat easily cross-checked, verified, and repeatable. So I'm not trying to convince you of anything, and you should always do your research. Anyways, here are some of my best results with dry ice. I did reach lower pressure, but only briefly, as the vacuum fitting I'm using is not recommended for ultra-high vacuum. But uh, for a very short time, I was able to recreate conditions in the coldest places of our solar system. For the record, I do not stand behind these value fully, but I have no reason to doubt them either. Finally, and as for a reference, the surface of the moon is a hundred times better vacuum than this. But for used eBay parts set up by an amateur, it's not that bad, considering. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video, and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one, and thank you for watching. Damn it!